for people to come away impressed by your organization, impressed by you. So you have a lot of credibility. But just before that, on your tables, you should all have a little blue card. Can you see the blue card there? Little six impact points. I'm just going to run through these. To help you with the mechanics of presenting, the mechanics of delivery. You see the first one there is six seconds. Maybe you get one of these. And it says six seconds of eye contact in six seconds. What that means is this. If I come over to opera something and I stare at her as a speaker, and I just keep looking at her and keep staring at her, she thinks I'm sort of some psycho <laughs> and uh, she doesn't want to have anything more to do with me. It's too much pressure. The alternative is you see politicians. They do about two seconds of fake eye contact with an audience. Flicking, just flicking. They're not actually engaging with anyone. Six seconds is about enough time to look at someone, have a conversation, and then pick up somebody else and have a conversation. So you work the whole room. That's the six seconds. Now, as an Australian, I don't know much about baseball, but I notice that they've got this left field, centre field, right field thing going, right? Well, that's your audience. You think about your audience. They're basically on the left side, middle, right side. I think you said before that you're only concentrated on one side of the room. So that's why we say work all six sectors and with those centre, right, left, you've also got inner field and outer field. So you've got those who are closest to you and those who are furthest away. So if you think about it, any audience, unless it's really tiny, you can basically break it up into six sectors. And the bigger the audience is, it doesn't make a difference. Different tiers of the auditorium, makes a difference. Left field, center field, right field, close and far. So the point is to make sure you're addressing everybody in the whole room. You're not just getting stuck on one side or just those in the front or looking at those at the back. You're actually got everybody involved. Right? That's really important. And six seconds is long enough, but don't make it too short or too long. Six seconds is roughly that long. Okay, what's the next one there? Space, right? Next one is space. So what that's saying is your face, this is the message. This screen is nowhere near as powerful as this screen, your face. Oh! Surprise. Puzzlement. Wow! Excitement. Your face can generate those ideas just from the expression. So we need to make sure our face is animated. It's not wooden. Okay, and again, you'll see in Japan, a lot of serious speakers, right? Very concrete, serious face. Just shutters it down hard. They don't get to use the power of their face to get the message across. What's the next one? What's the next one? Voice. Okay. So again, you know, in Japan, well, when I came to Japan, first time, 1979, I went to Georgia University, I was studying study Japanese. And so I'm like a typical foreigner, Utachima, Ikimi, Ikimasu, all up and down. And my sensei at that time, flat, flat, flat. <laughs> now a flat language is a monotone language. And Japanese is a monotone language. A monotone puts us to sleep very quickly, unless we do two things to it. In a monotone language like Japanese, where you don't have tonal variety much, if you put the power in, put in the speed, slow it down. Just those two simple variety points will give you enough difference to keep your audience awake and attracted to what you're saying. Even in a monotone language. What's next? Gestures, okay? So, it says 15 seconds. When you do a gesture, for about the first 10, 15 seconds, the gesture has power. But you'll notice that after about 15 seconds, all the power of that gesture just dies. And it becomes very, very annoying. So, please sit down. But many people are worried about their hands. So they'll do things like put their hands behind their back, 
because I don't have to do it with them. There's a problem with that. We don't trust you. Somehow deep in our psyche, since if we're living in caves, running around, you know, worried about uh, being eaten alive by tigers and whatever, we've never trusted people who we can't see their hands without even thinking it. We don't even think it. So as a speaker, always have your hands where they can be seen. Even just by your side. Trust me is a very powerful gesture because it says, look, look, no weapons. You can trust me. See, I can't, I'll be no weapons, trust me. So being able to show your hands is very, very critical. So don't get them locked up behind here, restriction gestures. Now, if you're an Australian, and you see this for Australian CEOs all the time, they don't know what to do. So they put their hand in the pocket. You will see any number of Australian CEOs beginning to be on TV with their hand in the pocket. The really confused ones, they put both hands in the pocket. <laughs> what the hell are they going to do with their hands, right? Don't put them in your pockets. Get them out there so you can bring them up for gestures. You can bring them down. Turn them on, turn them off. Turn them on, turn them off. Use them where they make sense. If it helps you, use it. Otherwise, use your face. Right? So be careful about locking up. And this one here, this is a very protective gesture. It says, I am protecting myself against you. Don't come close to me. I need to have some barrier between me and my audience. But as a speaker, you don't want that. You want to be close. You want them to come. Get my message. Come on. Listen to what I say. Believe what I'm telling you. You want them open. So don't close them out. That's why here's very natural position. You don't do anything else. Just keep them. What's the next one? Pause. The last time I taught this class was earlier this year. I had one gentleman from India, and he was a very fast speaker. Incredibly fast speaker. And he had a very strong Indian accent. And his sentences, well actually there was only one sentence. There were no breaks. It was just one continuous sentence. No pauses at all. So it was incredibly hard to follow. So that's an extreme case. After two days of this, wow, you should have seen it. Pauses, pacing, clarity. It was like night and day. You couldn't believe it was the same guy. So having a pause, just like that one I put in there, and that one, helps an audience to digest, capture what you're saying. If we hit them, this idea, this idea, this idea, this information, this idea, this information, they get lost. So you hit them with something, a little pause, let them think. Also, helps you to control your pacing. Particularly if you're very fast speaking. If you find yourself getting a bit nervous and you speed up, pauses help you to just slide down that little bit, give it a break, regroup, keep going. What's the next one? Question. Now, what does it say then? 50 50. Wait, wait. This is the simplest thing in the world. Stand about shoulder width apart, not like this, like this, shoulder width apart. And try and have your feet facing forward, and then use your neck to look at your audience. Otherwise, you're doing this all the time to cover an audience. Or if you're here, you're going to really talk around to look over here. So try and keep your feet basically in the front so you can cover the whole room without having to do too much movement. And have your weight 50 50. 50 percent, 50 percent. Not this one. Does this look professional? It's very casual. <laughs> Ladies, no, don't do that. Right? Just have your weight and keep it there. Stand straight. Stand tall. Look professional. Our appearance communicates so much. So there are some items. So anytime you are going to give a little talk, keep that. It's designed to go in your wallet or your purse or your meshi leg. So that if you've got to give a speech or a little talk, pull that out and go, yes, that one, that one, that one, yes, remember those things, put it away, and you will be much better. And we'll go to practice this. Now, I, but if you're giving a presentation, if you're representing a company or yourself, make eye contact with your audience. Six seconds. Talk to them. Talk to the people. Have you noticed I've been doing that all day since we started? I've been looking at you, and I've been talking to you for about six seconds. And I've been working in the entire room. All morning, 
I'm looking at you continuously. My eyes do not go anywhere else but your faces. Now, be careful about starting. Look away and then look back. It looks very shifty. <laughs> okay? It looks like you can't trust this person. Once you start looking at them, keep looking at them and then pick up the new person and go for it. Yes? You said that we should uh, divide in six pieces. Mm -hmm. When you say eye contact, do you look at the whole group or do you try to look one person? There's two points that I'll answer that question. First of all, I don't look at them in order. One, two, three, four. I don't go in random and look at one person. If you've got a big audience, if I'm looking at Tsuchi Murasan in a big audience and he's back quite a number of rows, at that distance, the 20 people sitting around him all think I'm looking at him at that distance. At this distance, it's obvious I'm looking at him. There's no confusion. But in a big distance, big audience, you can't tell. It doesn't matter. You pick the one person, the 20 around think you're talking to, great, fantastic. In a small audience, include everyone. We'll get a chance to practice that very, very shortly. So, so first session, we're going to work on first impressions. Okay, first impressions. Now, in your, in your manual, there should be uh, right at the front somewhere. On page three, there's an outline, and there's also there should be a tracking sheet. Where do you get the tracking sheet there? The tracking sheet is in sort of a mauve colour. Yeah, just can I just take it up for a second? Yeah, can you find this, the tracking sheet? On the front of this, it asks you to describe a vision for yourself. And it asks you for three attributes that you would like to have. I'll just explain what we're looking for there. The vision statement is where you would like to be in, say, three or six months' time. And it might, it's written in the present tense. We're here today, this is May. We might be talking about October, November this year. So you write it as if it's in October, November, for example. You say, for example, I've just finished a major presentation in front of all of my colleagues in my company. People's heads were nodding. I could see the body language. They are accepting my message. I felt clear and powerful in my presentation. And afterwards, so many people came up and congratulated me on my presentation. It showed me that the work I'd done had been worth it. Something like that. So it's a vision of how you'd like to see yourself as a presenter at a point in the future. But you write it as if it actually had happened. Is everyone clear on that? So it's a future vision, but it's written in the present tense. Don't write, oh, I will become, no, 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 I am. Right? I am. I just finished my presentation. It was like that. Okay. That's the first vision. Part. Now, the second part is these attributes, three attributes. What I'm looking for there from you is, now imagine you had given a presentation. Imagine that it's just finished, and everyone's leaving and you've just packed up and you're leaving too and you're walking out of the hall and you're just walking behind a group of people who listen to you. They don't know you're there but you can hear them absolutely clearly and they're talking about you and they're saying what they thought of you as a presenter. That speaker, so impressive, clear, concise. Oh, I really like that speaker. Inspiring. Really made me think. Great information. Whatever it is that you would like to hear in that secret opportunity to hear what they're saying about you, describing you, think of the three things that you'd most like to hear, and they're your attributes. Okay, so please write those on your tracking sheet. When you have written them on your tracking sheet, it's okay, you can just pass it up three by five times. Once you've done that and you've got that in your tracking sheet, then take one of these three by five cards, put your name 
at the top, please, and write the three attributes very clearly, one, two, three, on the card. And then I will have those with me when I'm behind that camera watching you. So I'll be looking for coaching you around the three things that you nominate are the most important to you. Is everyone clear? So your vision statement, the three things, the three attributes that you'd like to be known for as a presenter, then in the tracking sheet, then on this card. Are we all good? Okay, please go ahead and do that. Okay. This next two days, more power, more conviction, more energy with our presentations. In this first section, working on that first impression, this will be a benchmark because it'll be the first time we have an opportunity to capture you on film. You've just gone through and worked out some personal objectives, those three attributes that you want to work on. We're going to learn out about developing some rapport with the audience. And you've done the vision of where you want to see yourself. That's the objectives for this session. And so, very tricky structure, the first one. Okay, I think you know your name. You've probably got that mastered. I think you all know where you work and what you do there. You're good on the content. What sort of presentations do you most often give? Is it just an internal meeting? Uh, do you get a chance to speak in front of groups? Could be uh, outside of business, it doesn't matter. Organizations, organizations. Now, why is it important for you in terms of giving presentations, both to your organization, the organization's brand, I talked about before, and also for yourself? Right, so think about that, and we're going to begin your presentation each time you go, this first one anyway, each of you will say, here are the three things that I'm going to work on. So those who are listening, when you hear this, you go, oh, this person wants to be this, this, and this. For example, what's your three? Just tell us your three. Precise, concise, and entertaining. So precise, concise, and entertaining. So when he's presenting, is he being precise? Is he being concise? Is he being entertaining? That's what we'll be looking for. And you'll be asked to comment on what he's doing well. You're not going to be asked to critique each other. But you'll be asked to comment on what you saw that was good. Because often, standing up here, we've got so many other things going on in our mind, we're not actually noticing the things we're doing well. But an audience looks at us and goes, that was good. Or that was strong. Well, that was appealing. Very useful to get that feedback from a bigger audience. So we do a bit of crowdsourcing. Okay, a bit of crowdsourcing on the feedback. So you get different viewpoints on what's working for you. And I'll also, I'll start with some comments, and then I'll invite you to make some comments about what you saw that was working for that person. Okay, so that's the formula. So your three attributes, name, organization, position, what types of presentations you give most often, why is that important to your organization to you? I'm going to give you about two minutes. Just get your mind in order there, and then we will be up here starting. And 